All right, welcome back. We are here at the shop. Um, I've got Big Red here, and Big Red does not want to start. So at first I thought, you know, they just ran it out of fuel, and we need to bleed the injectors. So yesterday I went in and, and tried to bleed the injectors. Um, so I cracked the lines, got no fuel. I got fuel coming from uh, the filter housing going to the injection pump, and the solenoid clicks when I turn it on. Um, the fuel shut off solenoid, it clicks when I put 12 volts to it. But I wasn't getting any output whatsoever from the injection pump. So what I've got here is a new injection pump, and we are going to swap this thing out and hopefully get this thing running again. Now there wasn't really any how-to videos that I could see on YouTube um, that were you know, easily defined to show you exactly how to replace this. So I haven't done this before. We're gonna figure it out. And I'm gonna show you guys the struggles in the process that we're gonna go through. So from my, what I can tell, well this is gonna be fun. Every time I step, it's gonna move the camera. Obviously, pull off the air cleaner, right? And this was already loose because everyone's been jacking with it. What I understand, you got to take off the, the oil filler neck, and then you got three bolts that hold the injection pump onto the, um, the gear that's inside there. Now, I've also seen some people that take the whole entire housing off. I'm not so sure that's a great idea. But they had a used assembly, and what they were doing was is they pulled off all the fuel lines and everything together as one unit when they pulled theirs off, and that's probably why they just took the housing off so they can just drop it right back in. But what we're gonna do is take off the oil filler housing, the fill cap, um, the three bolts out of there. We're gonna remove our fuel lines from the injection pump and then of course we'll pull the injection pump out and then replace it with our new guy right here. So with that being said, there ain't nothing to it but to do it. Alright, the two bolts on the oil filler neck are half inch. I also think the motor has low compression um, because I couldn't even get it to start off either. Um, my plan is with this video is to kind of, I'm going to show you step by step, but I'm going to need to pause it quite often so I end up, you know, taking a part off and then you won't see it, but I'll show you the steps that I'm taking. As I'm removing it, or the plan, or what I did to get it off, if we completely miss it on camera. Um, all I have is my cell phone, so it's not really the ideal recording environment here. Alright, so half inch bolt there, half inch bolt there. Um, these are going to be 12 point, who knows what. Looks like maybe 10 millimeter, but we still gotta remove all our lines and linkages and all that, so we gotta do that still. Okay, the injection pump bolts are uh, 5 16 12 point. So the connections on the injection pump itself and on the, um, the fuel injector are 5 8 5 8 wrench. It's also the same for the line from the filter housing and the same for the line going into the injection pump. And then it looks like those are, these are half inch, those are different. One of them's half inch, the other one looks like it's 11 millimeter or something. I think they're supposed to be half inch. This bolt right here looks original, I'm pretty sure supposed to be half inch. Okay. So it looks like this bracket right here you probably can't see because it's heater hose. Uh, it, it looks like a 
fast idle or some kind of solenoid on there. So that needs to come off, the bracket off the side of there needs to come off. And then your throttle cables just link onto this one right here. Now this truck has got, you know, the hydraulic bed and everything, so they welded some kind of nut and got all this extra stuff on there. Um, there's a spring that goes, looks like from here to the bracket that bolts there. We're gonna need to keep that. Um, your connections, obviously. So we got this guy right here, and this guy right here. And these are the same wire, comes in the same location. This purple wire goes to our fuel shell solenoid, which is right here. And our return line right here, that needs to come off. And it looks like, so this is keyed. Um, when we take off these bolts right here, yeah, it should just go on, on just one way. So as long as we don't move the gear or anything at all, we should be just fine as far as um, timing goes. And then all your injectors are right there, your input's right there. All right, it should be, it should be pretty easy. There's nothing else on mine bolted onto this thing. I don't know if yours is going to be different or not, but. Okay, let me tell you what I've done so far. I've loosened all of our injector uh, lines, the lines going to the injectors. I've taken off the feed line um, from the filter housing to the front of the injection pump. So what it looks like is gonna have to happen is I'll need to take the whole injection pump out with all the lines attached to get it to get it out because you can't really get to the the nuts on the bottom of these of these lines if there's just no room so i still need to take off the return this guy right here mm -hmm. and i gotta take off this fast style solenoid whatever that is and i gotta take off the the uh, lifting eye because they attached a um a throttle cable to it so yep oh and then obviously I'll take the bolts out of the injection pump to the housing hopefully I can get to them all should be just three one on top and then two on kind of like the sides looks like this one towards the uh, thermostat housing is gonna be a bear Maybe all right, got a few more things disconnected. AC clutch line, moved it out of the way. What else did I move out of the way? Got my throttle cable out of the way. And I took off the return. So this was a three quarter inch. Now I just wanted to show you a little tip. I was thinking, I was like, this line's kind of in the way because I got to get to get to the bolts here, here, and then on this side, right? But I was looking at this, I was able to take it out and then just rotate it right the only thing you have to watch out for is your lines in the back so rotate that out of the way and now we can get to our 14 millimeter bolts that hold the injection pump to the housing and I've already loosened our um, 8 millimeter or 5 16 12 point bolts that hold the injection pump to the gear so now, just get, I think I just get these bolts out, take these out, and then I should be able to take the whole injection pump out. Oh look, I found the old oil fill cap. Hey, look at that. Need an extra oil fill cap, here it is. The nuts aren't coming off all the way from the stud because it hits the injection pump housing. There's just barely enough room to get this wrench in here to loosen these nuts. That one came out. Like I was saying before, the injection pump is keyed so as long as the gear doesn't move, it should just go in one way. Okay, so here's our 
there's our bolts from the injection pump to the gear. You know, I should be able to just take this off, right? There it goes. The bad thing about these lines is they get caught on everything. This way, there we go. Okay. So I rotated it, I don't know if you saw, and then got this side to go into the firewall while this was out. So now I'll take all these lines off and put it on the new pump and go from there and I'll clean all that diesel out of there. just to prove that my injector pump wasn't injecting injection pump. Injection pump. I'm trying to figure out what side is going to come off first. It seems like one side is over the other. I guess it's going to be a loosen and wiggle type situation. <laughs> on the passenger side of the center. That's how you can identify this to put it back to the correct orientation. Okay, I got the dirt off the lines, but the rust is still there. I really want to paint them, but I don't have time. I gotta get this truck running so I can move all this equipment out here and get this place cleaned up. Um, so now we're transferring the stuff from the old pump to the new pump. And one of the things we got to transfer is this fitting. loose balls on the truck too. Things you learn, right? Hopefully you guys will watch this whole video before you actually start working on this. Um, I was talking about timing and everything. So there is a mark on the casing and then there's a mark on the housing. Like the a little line. I'm just gonna line those up. I should have paid attention where it was before. I think the timing has to do with if you have the timing off, you're gonna get smoke. Um, Alright, so I gotta put this on the vise. I'll be right back. 
All right, I got it off. I want to show you something. So this may be why we failed. This pump failed, right? I think that's rust that's on here. And this is the <clears throat> inlet side <coughs> of the injection pump. So I need to check my filters and everything. Obviously, we gotta clean this out. This is almost like a paste, like a rusty paste. Let me clean this out. All right, lines are hooked up. Got my little fiber apparatus going, and I've oriented the keyway the same as it was on the old one, so it should. Go in relatively easy. All right. So we're gonna try going in the same way we went out. So pass your side in the firewall, come down, and then rotate. That seemed I'm guessing this keyway is the same orientation as the dowel pin right here. You probably can't see. But when I stick it in, I can see the keyway. There we go. I should probably stop the recording and then just put it all together until we get to uh, the bleeding process. All right, got the injection pump on. I uh, tightened these bolts. I tightened the bolts that go from the pump to the housing. I lined up our center line mark with the center line of the of this case here. Um, I've got our lines run, obviously, but they're not connected to the injectors. And what I want to do is kind of get some fuel flowing through it first and uh, see if there's any trash or anything in the lines. Hope there's not. I cleaned it out as much as I could. So let me turn this on, get some fuel flowing, see if we have any leaks that we're not supposed to have. And then I'll I'll put the uh, lines snugly back on the injectors, but still loose, so then we can start bleeding the system. Feel pressure. Should we clean this? 
somewhere. Oops. Got 12 volts there. Obviously, as you can hear, I got the an electric fuel pump on here. Yep. Let's crack that until we get all the air out of it. Well, that's better. Okay, no more air bubbles there. Okay. Now let's see if we got anything. So I have fuel coming out of each line, so now I'm going to kind of hand tighten these guys down. I'm going to pause this while I get these lines on. All right, let's get some bleeding action going. She'll pop off.
Okay, let me let that starter cool down. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can get her started. Okay. Do good for me. Cylinder. So I guess this is the end of Big Red. 